Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray and I'm a first year Cambridge student studying physical and natural sciences and in this video I'll be breaking down my personal statement. Just for context I applied to natural sciences at Cambridge and Durham and I applied to physics at Imperial, Manchester and Lancaster and managed to secure offers from all five. This video is purely for showing many of the points I mentioned in my personal statement tips video uh, which is linked above right now. Um, in practice and I would recommend watching that first and then coming back to this video because you can see many of the tips I mentioned in that video are prevalent throughout this one. I will mention the tips whenever they come up but I can't mention every fine detail otherwise the video will be too long. Also I hope that even if you do not plan on studying physics that you can still gain some insight into my thought process for uh, writing a personal statement. As a disclaimer, don't copy my personal statement, not even a sentence because that can lead you to copying more and more. When you submit your application, UCAS checks your personal statement across every personal statement ever submitted to them and across the internet for similarities. If your personal statement is at least 10% similar to something else, then they will let all the universities that you apply to know that you plagiarized and that could ruin your application. Anyways, now that's out of the way, let's get to the video. Right, so before we start, if you think my personal statement is quite cringe and a bit pretentious, don't worry because I think that too. Uh, but hey, when I wrote it two years ago, it did the job and my teacher seemed to like it. And remember, this is not the best personal statement, so it should not be used as a golden example of what a Cambridge personal statement should look like. Don't read it and think you have to be like me and do everything I did. Everyone is unique, so we'll write different personal statements about the things they enjoy. But anyway, let's begin. So the first thing you can see is that my personal statement is 53 characters as short of the 4,000 allowed on UCAS. And I would say that if you're running out of room and there are some things that you really do want to mention, then do ask your teachers if they can include it in their reference for you. So in my case, there were some things about some schools that I wanted to mention, uh, but I didn't uh, want to take away from anything that I've already written, um, so I just asked my teacher to include that detail for me in her reference. So my personal statement begins with, I am most infused by the breadth, depth, and interdisciplinary nature of modern science, especially when seeing our world being revolutionized by a wave of recent discoveries. So I wrote this sentence as a short and snappy introduction. It's basically a sophisticated way of saying I really like science, which was a message that I wanted to get across, whilst also showing my interest in recent scientific discoveries. The problem with this is that I came up with this introduction a few months prior to writing my personal statement uh, when I was reading an article, and I noted this introduction down and said I'm going to use something along these lines in my personal statement. But because I was so fixated on starting it uh, like this, I could see no other alternative. I think instead, had I brainstormed a few different introductions during my supercurricular activities then asked other people about their thoughts, then I could have picked the best one out of them, but um, I think it still did the job, this introduction. Now I say, to me, these exemplify that much more stems from the study of nature's quirks as this is where her secrets lie. So. My problem with this is that I'm not exactly sure what I meant by much more, is that like much more, uh, much more satisfaction or much more understanding or I, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I should have made that clear and I think the admissions tutor probably would have felt the same. Um, as for the latter part, um, as this is where her secrets lie, even though I don't think it's a personal statement cliche, looking back it does seem like a book movie cliche when you're talking about the secrets of nature. Uh, so I think if I was rewriting that now, I would have left that final bit out. And now in the next paragraph, I said, Recently, when discussing circular motion and gravitational fields with my classmates, I found myself asking, why do planets have elliptical orbits? So because I didn't really start my personal statement with a thought, question, or experience, I found it difficult to make it flow from the introductory paragraph. The whole reason I decided to start off my academic section like this is because my, on my first draft, my teacher looked at it and commented on the fact I didn't mention anything to do with my A-levels, and she reminded me that I was studying A-levels after all, and it would be nice to include a bit about them. So I decided to use my A-levels as a stepping point for uh, writing about supercurricular activities. And this is why I mentioned circular motion and gravitational fields, because both of them are on the A-level physics curriculum. 
and they can be related to things which are beyond the curriculum as well. As for the question I put at the end, I think that adding questions to your personal statement, especially if you're writing for a STEM subject, can be quite powerful, as it shows your interest in, in the subject and like to think about it as well. This goes back to my earlier point of show, don't tell. Show that you have a curious mind and don't just tell them, like, I have a curious mind. Show it with some questions or with exploration. And I think it is also quite fun for the reader to think the same question and ask themselves the same thing. Compelled to find out, I stumbled upon Feynman's lost lecture. I found immense satisfaction in understanding how various seemingly distinct ideas, e.g. the inverse square law and Kepler's second law, combined with some elegant geometry to show why an ellipse of all shapes arises. So this is where my first supercurricular mention starts, uh, the book Feynman's Lost Lecture and my experiences with it. I think that to me now, e.g. the inverse square law and Kepler's second law, the ideas don't seem so distinct, uh, but that may have been because I've now done a year of physics at university. But I think it's important to bear in mind that some of the things you mentioned may seem obvious to a professor or an academic reading a personal statement, but they will understand it won't be obvious to a student, which is just who's just starting out on their journey. So don't be afraid in writing anything that may seem a bit too simple for their liking. Um, as long as it's uh, good enough for you, then uh, yeah. But don't write something too simple like, why is the sky blue? Because that's those are questions that five-year-olds ask. However, it left me wondering what other connections am I missing out on? Discovering them at university will be most exhilarating. So this is another part where my teacher influenced what I was writing. She reminded me that after all, I was planning on studying at university and that I should bring more of that into my personal statement. So I tried to make a link here with what I have explored myself, but also saying that I'm looking forward to exploring more of my subjects at university. And I think when writing a personal statement, it's quite easy to forget that you are applying to university after all, and you're not just writing some kind of essay about your subject. I found Goodstein's revival of this once lost lecture to be as refreshing as the excellent Caltech series he hosted, The Mechanical Universe. So Goodstein is an author of Feynman's Lost Lecture, and when I searched him up, I found he presented the series, uh, The Mechanical Universe, which I watched on YouTube and really enjoyed. It's a 52-part series of roughly 30 minutes each, and I think I watched the first half, but that's okay, because it still was quite a lot. The program gave me a much more intuitive approach to much of physics, but most importantly made me realize that you cannot fully appreciate a solution until you struggle with the problem itself. I think the reason I included this was because it's how my supercurricular activities change my perspectives on physics and problem solving itself. And it's quite a good good thing when supercurricular activities do change your perspective on your subject uh, because it changes the way you will be approaching it. And then, of course, it's good to mention as well, because if your perspectives have changed, it's it makes an interesting discussion if you were to be asked about it in the interview, about how it's changed, why it's changed and whatnot. But of course, you should include some details of how and why um, in your personal statement itself. But of course, be prepared to speak at length about it in interviews if uh, they do ask something along those lines. Later, I found myself reading Feynman's QED. The book gave me a tantalizing taste of quantum electrodynamics, QED, whilst answering a long-standing question of mine. How does the light know which path is the fastest? So I think this is one example where my language gets a bit odd when I say uh, tantalizing taste. It makes it seem more like I'm writing some kind of literary work. Nevertheless, this sentence touches on the second book I read. Whilst I did read many more, I only wrote about two in my personal statement because it is much easier to prepare for interviews if you have your books written on there. Instead, if I mentioned, say, five books on my personal statement, then I would have to prepare for an interviewer asking a question on any of those five. So I think this is part of the uh, write more about less aspect comes in. Um, because if you write more about less books, then it plays to your advantage because you know if they were to ask a question, it would be more likely to do with one of these books. So when you're rereading it, you will have to read like, reread like five different books or something. You would just have to go over the one or two that you've mentioned. But of course, it may be a different story if you're applying for more essay heavy subjects. Interestingly enough, I was asked about QED in my interview. Um, the question was just to briefly describe what it is about, and I think the question was more to assess 
whether or not I actually read the book rather than how well I understood it. Because a lot of people lie and say that they've read such and such a book, but they haven't actually. And if that's the case and the interview catches them out with a question, then it's not going to work particularly well for them. Initially, I was reluctant to use the probability framework the theory provided. Perhaps I envisaged photons having some internal mechanism dictating their paths. This later changed once I was marveled by the far-reaching applications this approach has. Uh, for example, being able to find the most likely path a photon would take between two arbitrary points by summing a series of arrows. So this is about my experience with the book QED itself and how it changed my preconceived ideas. And I think what this does well is that it shows that if you, for your exploration, uh, your preconceived ideas or your understanding of the subject does change and it does sort of like broaden your horizons in a sense. Uh, which is quite interesting to write about and discuss with an interview. Because of this seemingly absurd way to describe the behavior of light, QED radically shifted my understanding of everyday physics. I loved using the ideas I read about to explain subtle observations I make, such as uh, why a beautiful array of colors appear when oil slicks form on wet roads, or why uh, wet surfaces appear darker. And this is what I mean by writing more about less. Here I related what I learned from QED to explain natural phenomena in the world, such as the rainbow colors you see on oil slicks uh, you see on the side of the road. My interest in mind is prevalent even during my chemistry practicals. During a recent titration, I asked why does a meniscus form? From here, I learned about how the cohesion and adhesion of water molecules lead to capillary action, allowing for complex plant life to develop. The polar nature of water, which makes it an excellent solvent, allowing it to harbor life, shows just how important the recent detection of a subsurface water lake on Mars using radio pulses was. So I quite like this part because it does a few things well. I asked another scientific related question because I was applying for natural sciences at Durham and Cambridge, and I wanted to show that I have some interest in the other sciences too. It ties together some parts of physics, chemistry, and even biology, despite not having studied biology at A-level, but also does something which was big in the news at the time I wrote this. And it does show that I'm quite up to date with the recent scientific news which comes under supercritical activities and that I could appreciate it from my um, from the exploration I was doing around the subject and I think it flows quite well as well. In the end I thoroughly enjoyed learning about QED as it was wonderfully different to anything I had ever encountered. I hope many of the ideas I come across at un university are much the same. So I decided to sum up my paragraph with an emphasis on QED and relate it back to applying to university. I think this paragraph as a whole demonstrates my interest in this area of physics that I explored on my own well enough without explicitly saying something like, I'm passionate about physics so I explore it in my own time. Remember, it's show not tell. And I give evidence for having explored it by relating it to natural phenomena. And throughout the super quick activity section you can see somewhat of a story happening here which adds to flow rather than me listing like uh, five different books and jumping around between them and mentioning all sorts of articles and stuff. I relish a challenge, especially having my speed and physical intuition stretched when I scored highly on the Senior Maths Challenge, AS Physics Challenge, and Cambridge Chemistry Challenge. Now, in this paragraph, I begin to talk about some other supercurricular activities outside just reading books and exploring the internet. So I participated in a bunch of challenges and wrote about them over here. And if you're doing STEM subjects, I would suggest you find some challenges to participate in, uh, such as these challenges and many more in maths, physics, chemistry, biology, and whatnot. Or if you're doing a humanities subject, try and find some essay competitions to enter uh, so you can write about them as well in your personal statement. And I don't think it really matters if you don't like get a gold medal or in it or something or you don't win first place. It's about what participating demonstrates that you're willing to go and beyond to do more than what's required of you in the A-level alone. These awards demonstrate my resilience and perseverance in dealing with hard questions, especially the counterintuitive ones, i.e. the most fun ones. I hope my need to always work at the edge of my abilities will help me reach sufficient mathematical fluency to appreciate the full beauty of QED. So this is the only time I would say not to follow the show, don't tell approach uh, when you're trying to demonstrate transferable skills. So here I briefly mentioned that I have resilience and perseverance and also that I want to push myself because I'm doing these challenges uh, as evidence for that. 
And then I finally relate it to my future aspirations. And these transferable skills, resilience and perseverance, are quite big deals in when it comes to further education, studying in university and whatnot. So the fact that I can use examples of having done these challenges as evidence of that, I think it's quite good for interviewers to see. Um, because I would say that if you don't have any examples, then it's quite hard for them to actually believe you. Outside of academia, I take an avid interest in computing, video production and writing. Filming and editing computing related videos for my YouTube channel of over 2,800 subscribers allows me to share my love and understanding of technology whilst developing my communication skills for larger audiences. Meanwhile, writing explanations, book reviews and problems for my blog has allowed me to express ideas coherently whilst consolidating my understanding within various fields. So this is why I briefly talk about my extracurricular activities, although the blog um, part of it makes it seem slightly more of a supercurricular activity. In this, I mention an old YouTube channel and a blog I had. Remember, this was written two years ago and I have moved on to other projects since then, but I still talk about the transferable skills it demonstrates for me. And like I said, it's more about what you get out of the activity rather than the activity itself. In terms of transferable skills, I mainly mention communication skills over here uh, from having a YouTube channel and having a blog. And I would say that if I did uh, do other extracurriculars, like maybe play an instrument and have weekly lessons or something, I could have included uh, time management skills um, as transferable skills. But I didn't have any of that, and this is what I included, and it still worked out fine. But I would suggest that you do think about the extracurricular activities you have done and try and think about what other skills you have gained from doing them and then writing about them if possible. And I would try to make it clear what transferable skills you've gained from the, doing these activities because as for the admissions tutors, they're going to be reading through tons of personal statements and they're not going to have enough time to stop and see all the, tra uh, all the extracurriculars you've listed and think about what skills you may have gained from doing them. It's better for you to say explicitly, in this case, what skills you have gained from doing these extracurriculars. Whereas this is not really the case for the academic side. Anyways, this section mentions what I enjoy doing in my free time. And even during the interview, I was asked about the computing part because the interview thought it was interesting, so I briefly talked about some projects I worked on. Ultimately, I aspire to be a researcher to further advance mankind's understanding of the universe. I hope your challenging yet rewarding course can bring this dream one step closer. And finally, I end my personal statement with a nice little conclusion that focuses on my aspirations for the future and finally ties it back to the course that I am applying for. But in this case, I didn't mention the name of any specific course or university. Um, for universities, your one personal statement goes to all five of them, uh, which means that you should not mention the name of any specific university that you're applying to, but it's okay if the university name appears, such as in the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge. And as for the course, if you're applying for like physics at five different universities, it's fine if you say, I look forward to studying physics at university or something. But in my case, because I was applying for three physics courses and two natural sciences courses, I didn't want to write, I look forward to studying physics at university because all my choices weren't pure physics. And especially in the case of Durham, um, because on their website, they said they do like to see as students applying for natural sciences there mention more than uh, one science, which is why I included chemistry earlier on. But if I wasn't applying for Durham and I was just applying for natural sciences at Cambridge, I probably would have included more physics and instead included more about natural sciences in the Cambridge SAQ, which is an additional form they send you after you submit your UCAS application, where you get another 1,200 characters uh, to write about. It's like uh, and sort of extended personal statement almost. But you don't have to fill it in if you don't want to, and many people don't fill it in, in and they still get offers. In my case, I included a bit more about natural sciences in there, and yeah, that was it. And that's basically it. I hope you found that useful. If you did, then leave a like, and if not, leave a dislike and let me know why. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I'll try my best to get back to you. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.